What's up everybody, Hunter here, and today I wanted to talk about local storage, uh, window.local storage, which is a, the browser's way to store some data for you, and it's actually very, very easy to do, um, and as you can see down in the browser compatibility, it works with every browser, so you can use it even on Internet Explorer 8 and probably below that. So let's check out the code example that I have. Um, I have a blank, well, a pretty basic index.html. Nothing fancy here. And then just an example.js. And in the example.js, there's currently nothing. Uh, to demonstrate this, I wanted to add like a theme toggle, like a dark mode, light mode toggle to our very basic site. So let's add some styles to do that first. Add a little style tag here. And now maybe we can add a class to the body. Um, yeah, let's do that. Call it dark for dark mode. And if there's a dark then the background color, we want to make it a dark mode. And then the text color, we we'll want to make it white, right? So let's put in some content so we can see the color change as well. So maybe code bushy. And then maybe a paragraph. It says local storage demo. Cool. I'm going to save that. Got a nice auto formatter going. And I'm going to refresh this. All right. So this is what our dark mode should look like. Now, how do we do a low toggle? Well, we can get rid of this class. Maybe put an ID on this body, main body or something. We can add a button. Add like a dark mode button. Like so. Give it a type of button. And dark theme. Okay. And then on click, we're going to make it do something. So in here, we can make a function. Uh, maybe like a set theme function and then the argument that it will get is the theme right okay and let's just console.log the theme to make sure this works <clears throat> now if we go in here and give it a like a string of dark and then if we press this button we should see it log in the console so now the dark mode went away because we took away that class and now okay see how it works when we hit the dark theme button we're console.logging so that function is working great so we want to do something like get document actually document get element by ID and we'll want to add like the dark class to our body right so we'll get the body by ID and then to do that there's a thing called class list and then you can just do add and then you can just start adding classes to whatever element you get in this case it's going to be our main body and we're going to add the dark. So when we hit this button, <clears throat> we're going to make it the dark theme. Cool. See how it worked? And now let's make like a light theme button. Basically, we can copy this. Whoops. Just want to do it once. Uh, we could probably do blank, but let's just make it light so it's a little more clear. 
give it a light theme button, right? And now, so the dark theme button we press, the theme is going to be dark. So, we can do a if theme is dark, and we want to add the dark class to our body. Otherwise, we want to remove it. And to remove it, you just do remove. Class list remove. So now we should have two buttons. We should start with the light theme. If we click on a dark theme, it goes dark. And then we can actually see the class there. And then if we click on a light theme, it removes it. Okay, so this is our very simple uh, dark theme, light theme toggle. But if we go to dark theme and we refresh, like it doesn't persist, right? So this is where local storage comes in. And to take a look at local storage in Chrome, if you go to the application tab, there's actually a storage section here. Uh, and local storage is one of them. And as you can see, it's kind of blank. <clears throat> it's blank right now. And this will be whatever like URL you're visiting. So if you're at like www.google.com, this would be google.com here. But since we're on like a local file thing, it just says file, but it still works. Uh, so how does local storage work? Well, it's very easy. You just do local storage dot set item. And the first thing you pass it is a key. And the second thing you pass it has to be a string, but that string is the thing that gets stored. All right, so let's just copy this example here and add it to our function at the end. And it's, I usually like to do window.localStorage. And if you save it, and if we, well, we're already in inspector mode, refresh it click dark theme see how it now we have a the key and then the value here and then light theme will do the same but I mean this information is currently useless but what if we could store like the theme color that we are currently on right so this would be like theme key I mean you don't have to put key you can just put theme and then this would be the actual theme that we're on right so we're just going to store it and now and, and if you're in the local storage tab you can clear all of it if you have multiple ones here let me let me add the new one see now now i have two right you can clear both of them with this button or you can just delete one at a time so i'm going to delete the example one it's not letting me delete for some reason all right, I'll just delete all of them. Okay, so now when I hit the dark theme, as you can see, the key is the theme we gave it, or we just said theme, down here. And then the value is going to be this theme, which is going to be dark. Right, and then if we click light, it's going to change to light. Dark, it changes to dark. But th what happens here is when you refresh, uh, nothing's currently staying because we have to read from here, but this persists. See how this stays the dark theme? That's what local storage does for you. So how do we actually read from this? Well, we have local storage that set item. What we want to do is whenever the page loads, we want to read this key. So maybe we make a new function called get item. Or maybe get theme right and it probably won't need anything here and then we'll do theme window dot local storage dot get item and the key you get has to be the same one as here as the one you set and then let's just log it console dot log theme to our console 
and we want to run the get theme immediately. So we'll do one of these. And now if we go to the console and we reload, okay cool, so we're actually getting the dark theme. It's reading from our local storage. And now what we can do is um, we can do set theme. We can just invoke this function and pass along the theme we are reading from. So if we have it in here and I reload, cool, we have the dark theme. So now light theme, reload, it's light theme, dark theme, reload. You see a little flash, but it's still dark theme. And if we clear this guy out, now we reload, it's going to be nothing because it doesn't read from anything. And as you can see here, it set a value to null. Uh, so what happens is every time you read from local storage, you kind of always want to make sure you get something back and then do, some, do the thing you want to do. Because if not, this is going to be null and it's going to set the theme and it's going to pass it down to null. So you only want to do if theme actually exists, then you want to set the theme. So then you won't get this set value of null, which will confuse you. So dark theme, set star local storage, we close it. So now even if I like close my browser, right? Even if I close the browser and then reopen it and go back to the page, it still persists as the dark theme because it's still in here. But if I go to like incognito window and do it, incognito window is not going to save your local storage. So uh, it's not going to work in incognito window. But like if you clear cache and stuff, you're going to clear their stuff out. But if they don't do that, then you have your local storage and it's pretty nifty. And the other caveat with local storage is that it has to store a theme or it has to store a string at all times. So let us kind of add a new example here. Maybe we can do like a state or something. Because local storage works with any JavaScript. It's just vanilla JavaScript, so you can use it with like React or anything. And in React, you usually have like a state object, right? And maybe you have a first name. And then maybe you have a last name in your state object. Whatever your state object looks like. Right? And you might be tempted to just store the object. I just want to store state. And this would be the state key. Right? And I'm just going to do this right off the bat. And let's just see what happens if you try to store something that is not a string, but an actual object, like your uh, state in React. Let's go to the application tab. OK, we see it stored object object, which is weird, right? That is not what we want. So what you need to do is to actually, before you store it, you need to json dot stringify. So if you json dot stringify, the object is going to convert it into a string, and then it will save properly. Now we reload. Okay, now we have our object looking string, right? It's our json string first name last name is still there and let's say we want to read from that so we have set state <coughs> let's say we want to get state right well, I'm going to just comment those out for now and this will be state 
I'm going to delete these. Now I'm going to get our state item. And let's see what it looks like. So on the load, it should get it. All right, cool. We have that. But as you can see, it's the string still. So whenever you work with objects or arrays or anything like that, you need to have a second step, which when you first JSON stringify, you now need to JSON parse. So if you JSON parse the JSON string that you have, now you get the object that you want. Now you can work with this. So if you're working in like React or something like that, uh, you can persist your state. If you have like a global state that you have going on, you can persist it by doing something like this. So let's pretend we're in React land. And every time you set state, you do like a this dot set state, right? Then you set the state if you're using the old way or if you're using hooks, you kind of just use the uh, use state hook. And then the second argument or the second array item you get back from that is how you set the state. Well, anytime you set the state, you can kind of just capture this right so then you would do something like this dot set state and then right after it you can kind of just do window dot local storage and you set the item in local storage that's how you would do it and then if you wanted to retrieve that like on component did mount or something you would do the get state part you would get this then you would json parse it out then you would set this as your state and that's how you would persist state in something like react um yeah hope this was helpful to you a uh, quick video today but local storage is super simple to use and you can use it basically on any browser anywhere um you should try it out try to store some state in react or some other framework try it out in just vanilla javascript because you know it's built right in. Uh, hope this was helpful. Let me know if you like videos like this in the comments below and have a great day.